Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is capacitive complex impedance. Our objective is to learn how to represent capacitors as complex impedances for the purposes of AC circuit analysis. This lecture operates on the presumption the viewers watch the resistive complex impedance lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. You are no doubt familiar with the DC response of resistors, capacitors, and inductors. In summary, resistors follow Ohm's law, a phenomenon that relates voltage, current, and resistance. Resistors dissipate all power supplied to them in the form of heat and are not energy storage devices. Even our initial discussions of resistors and sinusoidal AC sources demonstrated that resistors consistently follow Ohm's law and voltage and current are in phase with one another. Capacitors and inductors, in contrast, are reactive elements and can momentarily store and return energy. As such, the reactive nature of these energy storage devices need to be accounted for. Recall from our discussions about the time-variant DC response of capacitors that initially uncharged capacitors experience a current spike followed by rising voltage. This behavior can be summarized as current leading voltage for capacitive elements and that the current spike occurs before rising voltage. The time constant established by the capacitive circuit under inspection determines how slow or fast this exchange of energy occurs. Similarly, recall from our discussion on the time variant DC response of inductors that inductors with no established magnetic field experience a voltage spike followed by rising current. This behavior can be summarized as current lagging voltage for inductive elements and that the current rise occurs only after the voltage spike. As with capacitors, the time constant established by the inductive circuit under inspection determines how slow or fast this exchange of energy occurs. For purposes of time variant DC analysis, we never really explored beyond these horizons. If, however, we push the boundaries into circuits incorporating sinusoidal AC sources, sources that continuously change, there is no initial nor steady state reactive elements like capacitors and inductors will continuously store and discharge energy on a cyclical basis. Despite this constant interchange, one truth remains constant. Current will be in phase with voltage for purely resistive elements. Current will continuously lead voltage for purely capacitive elements, and current will continuously lag voltage for inductive elements. We'll examine this phase-shifted response in greater detail in later lectures. The reactive nature of elements in AC circuit analysis are accounted for using one of two tools. One, either time-consuming calculus-based techniques, or two, simple algebraic techniques making use of complex numbers. My choice is to employ complex numbers. Bottom line up front, resistors, capacitors, and inductors can be represented as complex impedances, where impedance is a term quasi-equivalent to resistance for the purposes of DC circuit analysis. Only the complex nature of impedance includes time-shifted effects for purposes of AC circuit analysis. The true nature of complex impedance will only become apparent in later lectures. However, we at least need to learn to calculate complex impedance for now. Resistors, when represented as complex impedances, are elements entirely in the positive horizontal real X plane. Frequency of the AC source has no effect on the magnitude of the resistive complex impedance. As such, a resistor represented as a complex impedance can be calculated as the resistance value at an angle of zero when represented using polar format. When depicted in the impedance domain, resistors exist solely on the real horizontal x-axis proportional to the resistor's magnitude. If you wanted to represent resistive complex impedance using rectangular format, it would be proportional to R existing solely in the real horizontal x-axis plus or minus j times zero. Since we're representing the complex impedance of resistors using a complex number, note the value ZR includes an overbar, indicating this isn't just a magnitude, but also includes a direction. Capacitors, in contrast, when represented as complex impedances, are elements that exist entirely in the negative vertical imaginary y-axis. Frequency the AC source does have effect on the magnitude of capacitive impedance using the following formula. Z of C, note the overbar, equals 1 over 2 pi times the frequency in units of hertz times the capacitance in units of farads at an angle of negative 90 degrees when represented using polar format. When depicted in the impedance domain, capacitors exist solely in the negative imaginary vertical y-axis 
proportional to 1 over 2 pi fc. We'll examine capacitive complex impedance in detail in today's lecture. Finally, inductors, when represented as complex impedances, are elements that exist entirely in the positive vertical imaginary y-axis. Frequency of the AC source does have effect on the magnitude of inductive impedance using the following formula. Z of L, note the overbar, equals 2 pi times the frequency in units of hertz times the inductance in units of Henry's at an angle of positive 90 degrees when represented using polar format. When depicted in the impedance domain, inductors exist solely in the positive imaginary vertical y-axis proportional to 2 pi FL. We'll examine inductive complex impedance in an upcoming lecture. You note the units of complex impedance, regardless of the resistive, capacitive, or inductive nature of the element in question, are always expressed in units of ohms. Only direction gives some clue as to the resistive, capacitive, or inductive characteristics. Purely resistive elements have a magnitude in units of ohms proportional to R at an angle of zero. Purely capacitive elements have magnitude in units of ohms proportional to 1 over 2 pi fc at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Purely inductive elements have a magnitude in units of ohms proportional to 2 pi fl at an angle of positive 90 degrees. Additionally, note capacitors and inductors are essentially mirror images of one another, with 180 degree differential between them, a fact we'll use to our advantage in industrial applications like power factor correction in later lectures. As an illustrated example of application of the capacitive complex impedance formula, consider a 22 microfarad capacitor subjected to sinusoidal AC with a frequency of 60 Hz. Let's calculate the complex impedance of this capacitor, expressing our final answer using polar format. By all means, follow along and see if you can obtain the same value as I do. By the way, this isn't a polite suggestion. Pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. When we substitute our given values into the capacitive complex impedance formula, we arrive at an impedance value of 120.6 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. When calculating capacitive complex impedance, don't worry about the angle at first. Just calculate the magnitude using the formula 1 over 2 pi fc and stick at an angle of negative 90 degrees behind it and call it good. If we were to express this in rectangular format, z of c would be equal to negative j 120.6 ohms. Although equivalent, rectangular format is somewhat old fashioned. All the cool kids nowadays are using polar format and I suggest you do the same if you want to stay on the cool side of history. By the way, if you're getting a different magnitude than I am, Remember the scientific calculator follows the order of operations exactly as entered and does not take into account what you meant to enter. As such, it's often necessary to enclose the term below the division operator, 2 pi fc, in parentheses to make certain the scientific calculator executes the formula exactly as you intended. Introductory AC circuit analysis scenarios largely involve use of this basic impedance formula. As such, let's gain some practice using it with some example problems. First problem, what happens to the capacitive complex impedance of this 22 microfarad capacitor if I double the frequency to 120 Hz? No calculations, just think about it. Does the magnitude and direction of the respective complex impedance decrease, increase, or remain the same? Take the batteries out of your scientific calculator and put it on the table and put your hands in the air. Just look at the formula and answer the question. What happens to the capacitive complex impedance of this 22 microfarad capacitor if I double the frequency to 120 Hz? Does the magnitude and direction of the complex impedance decrease, increase, or remain the same? By all means, pause the lecture and think about this, but don't you dare touch your calculator because I'm watching you. If you have the level of mathematical competency I expect you to possess, you should realize that the magnitude of the capacitive complex impedance should decrease at increased frequencies since the capacitive complex impedance of purely capacitive elements is proportional to 1 over 2 pi fc. Given frequency has doubled, the magnitude of the capacitive complex impedance will be half of its original value. Angle, however, will remain fixed at negative 90 degrees. If we do the calculations, we find our hypothesis to be true. Substituting in the given values at 120 Hz, we find the magnitude of the capacitive complex impedance has dropped to roughly 60.3 ohms, half our earlier magnitude, yet the angle remains fixed at negative 90 degrees. Increasing frequency decreases capacitive complex impedance. I'll return to this point in a moment.
Second question, what happens to the complex impedance of this 22 microfarad capacitor if I have the original frequency down to 30 hertz? Again, no math, just think about it. Does the magnitude and direction of the capacitive complex impedance decrease, increase, or remain the same? By all means, pause the lecture and think about this. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Again, if you have the level of mathematical competency I expect you to possess, you should realize that the magnitude of the capacitive complex impedance should increase since the complex impedance of purely capacitive elements is proportional to 1 over 2 pi fc. Given frequency has been halved, the magnitude of capacitive complex impedance will be twice its original value. Angle, however, should remain fixed at negative 90 degrees. If we do the calculations, we find our hypothesis to be true. Substituting in the given values at 30 Hz, we find the magnitude of the capacitive complex impedance has doubled to roughly 241.1 ohms, yet the angle remains fixed at negative 90 degrees. Decreasing frequency increased capacitive complex impedance. Can you see the larger points through which I've dragged you with these two simple example problems? Increasing frequency decreases the magnitude of purely capacitive complex impedances. However, the angle remains fixed at negative 90 degrees. In contrast, decreasing frequency increases the magnitude of purely capacitive elements. However, the angle remains fixed at negative 90 degrees. If we were to perform the same analysis at three times, one third, four times, a quarter, five times, and one fifth, and so on of our original frequency, we should arrive at some pretty self-evident results, notably what we've previously observed. The magnitude of the complex impedance of capacitors presents an inversely proportional relationship to frequency, and that a plot of the magnitude of capacitive complex impedance increases at lower frequencies and decreases at higher frequencies. The angle in contrast remains fixed at negative 90 degrees. These properties cannot be mistaken. If you think about this in terms of our previous experience with capacitors, this makes total sense. Think about capacitors at steady state DC conditions, essentially zero hertz. What's the complex impedance of a capacitor at zero hertz? The formula makes it pretty clear that a capacitor presents a lot of impedance at low frequencies essentially infinite impedance at zero hertz. Once a capacitor is charged, current flow totally stops, hence the high impedance value at low frequencies. And in contrast, at incredibly high frequencies, the capacitor is allowed to only briefly charge before polarity swaps and discharges it, charges it in this direction briefly before polarity swaps again and discharges it and so on. At high frequencies, the capacitor presents only a small impedance to continually alternating current. The larger points of this will become clearer in later lectures, especially when we examine AC Ohm's law. The intention of today's lecture is to merely gain some more practice with the capacitive complex impedance formula. As such, let's put your understanding of the capacitive complex impedance formula to the test with the following set of example problems. By all means, pause the lecture and solve for the desired quantity. Pay attention to a couple of these. Some may require algebraic manipulation to arrive at the results you seek. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The first handful of example problems are simple basic applications of the capacitive complex impedance formula. For our first example problem, substituting in our given values, we find a 140 microfarad capacitor at 40 Hz to present an impedance of approximately 28.4 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Similarly, we find a 3300 picofarad capacitor at 1 kilohertz present an impedance of approximately 48.2 kilo ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Finally, we find a 1.5 microfarad capacitor at 200 hertz to present an impedance of approximately 530.5 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. The remaining two example problems necessitate a degree of mathematical competency on your part. In the fourth example problem, we're being asked to solve for the frequency at which a 0.027 microfarad capacitor presents a 150 ohm impedance at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Given angle isn't a function of frequency, we can kind of neglect it and use the magnitude only. Algebraically manipulating the capacitive complex impedance formula to solve her frequency, we find frequency equals 1 over 2 pi times the capacitance times the magnitude. Substituting their given values, 
we find a 0.027 microfarad capacitor. We'll choose a complex impedance magnitude of 150 ohms at a frequency of roughly 39.3 kilohertz. Finally, for our fifth example problem, we're being asked to solve for the capacitance value, which presents a 380 ohm impedance at an angle of negative 90 degrees, given a 60 hertz excitation frequency. Again, given angle isn't a function of frequency, we kind of neglect it and use the magnitude formula only. Algebraically manipulating the capacitive complex impedance formula to solve for the capacitance, we find capacitance equals 1 over 2 pi times frequency times the magnitude. Substituting in our given values, we find that a roughly 7 microfarad capacitor would achieve a complex impedance magnitude of 380 ohms at a frequency of 60 hertz. This ordinarily isn't a standard capacitor value, so we'd have to choose the next closest commercially available capacitor, which off the top of my head I think would probably be the 6.8 microfarad capacitor. As a remaining exercise for the viewer, I invite you to calculate the capacitive complex impedance of a 6.8 microfarad capacitor at 60 hertz. You should find its complex impedance to be relatively close to 380 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. There you have it. That's really all there is to be said about capacitive complex impedance, for now. We'll revisit this topic in later lectures and discuss the significance of the negative 90 degree angle for capacitive complex impedance when we examine AC Ohm's law. As a preview of this topic, note that current through a capacitor will always lead the voltage across it. While the magnitude of capacitive complex impedance accounts for the amount of current that may flow, the negative imaginary nature of capacitive complex impedance accounts for this time-shifted response of current. As I said, we'll examine all this and more in later lectures. In conclusion, this lecture examined capacitive complex impedance. We learned to calculate capacitive complex impedance and algebraically manipulated the capacitive complex impedance formula to solve for other quantities like frequency and capacitance value. We learned that the magnitude of capacitive complex impedance increases at lower frequency and decreases at higher frequencies, however the angle remains fixed at negative 90 degrees. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lazy Lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.